in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Many of you may not notice what the Holy Ghost is doing. But let me tell you something, friends. Paul, speaking to his son Timothy in the gospel, he said, meditate on these things. He said, give yourself wholly to them. Eventually, your profiting will appear unto all. Hallelujah. When you sow a seed and you pour water, sometimes it will take a while. You may not know that something is happening. One day you will wake up in the morning and suddenly you will see a sign that there is growth. A few years after you will look at that same tree and many will come to find shelter. This is the mystery of the spiritual man. That you start small. Small. In the kingdom at any level you can be received. You can start small. Let there be a determination in your heart that every time I come for koinonia, listen, if you stop getting blessed, stop coming. Don't waste your time. I'm telling you, you won't go to hell, but you do something else with your time. Hallelujah. We're very serious about what God has given us. That's why we don't have time for unnecessary jokes. We get to the business of the day because we know that there are certain destinies if God does not step in, Satan will make a shipwreck of them. There are many of you who are coming here with situations that are a matter of life and death. We cannot be joking. Hallelujah. I want us to hurry up. I promised us that we will try to maintain the time. Koinonia is not the kind of meeting that you can do in two or three hours. Hallelujah. I wish we had an auditorium of our own old meetings. Is a, is a lot. It's, see, these are spiritual syllables we are covering. Are you following me now? And sometimes when I see that which God wants to bring, we are lagging behind. We meet only once in a week. Take advantage of it. Hallelujah. Even if we met three or four times in a week, it will not be enough. I'm telling you. If you know the urgency of what God wants to make out of your life, you will make the... He said, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, Lord, there is only one Lord in this place. It's not Joshua Selman. It's not any minister, but the King of Kings. We only live to serve your majesty. Let every pride be nailed to the cross. Let every tendency for vain glory be nailed to the cross. We are not ashamed to declare that we are your servants. Tonight, Lord, I pray that you move through me and bless your people. Our hearts are opened. In the name of Jesus, break every pride, break every flesh, break every tendency of the human spirit and soul to interrupt that which you want to do. Let your people be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Ephesians 2.10 tonight, I want you to listen very carefully. There are not many messages I tell people to listen to. But tonight's message will bless you. I'm sharing tonight on the price for a glorious destiny the price for a glorious destiny I know that we have one more one more session to cover for the full gospel series but we'll take that another time be conscious of the presence of God as we minister Ephesians 2 verse 10 quickly anybody Thank you, Jesus. Have you wondered why? Please look up. 
Have you wondered why in life certain people emerge so victorious, glorious, with enviable destinies? Hallelujah. While others live as failures in life. Hallelujah. I've always wondered, is it that God made some people failures? Is it that some people were destined to be failures? Hallelujah. While the world is celebrating the investments of God in others, other people just, they are at the lower levels of life. They make no impact. They don't live out why they were born. Tonight, I pray that this message will challenge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The price for a glorious destiny. Write this down. The word destiny. Write destiny. Please make sure next time when you're coming, you hold something to write with. If, you, if your neighbor is not writing, you can help them, please. The paper, biro, just share with someone. Or if you have a phone, you can use your notepad or something. Or if you can just have it, no problem. You can get the teaching later. Destiny. Now, the word destiny is an interesting word. It means a predetermined future. Very simply. The word destiny means a future that has been predetermined. Hallelujah. A future that has been predetermined. Ephesians 2 verse 10. Anyone? Yes, please. Very loud. For we are his workmanship. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus. Unto good works. Unto good works. Which God had before ordained. Which God had before ordained. That we should walk that in them. That we should walk in them. Thank you, sir. He said, For we are what? His workmanship. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus that we should walk unto good works to walk in a path that has been foreordained he told Jeremiah in chapter 1 he said right from when you were in your mother's womb I knew you, formed you, called you ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says for I the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord he said they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to what an expected end that means I had an expectation hallelujah are you listening to me so the word destiny this is so important the word destiny means a predetermined future predetermined by who God God the Bible says we existed in God in eternity. Hallelujah. This is very, very important. Many people do not live to hear these kinds of teachings. And they become failures in life. They are being born again notwithstanding. I'd like you to say after me, I have a destiny. Say it. Say I have a destiny. Say it confidently. I have a destiny. Say I was born for a reason. Let's see some facts about destiny quickly. Number one, facts about destiny. Every man was born for a reason. Every man, this is the first point I want you to know tonight. Every man, those who serve the great and the great, every man according to God's predeterminate counsel, every man was born for a reason. I don't care how you came, whether it was as a result of one harlot meeting another man, is irrelevant. Hallelujah. One more time, say I have a destiny. What you are saying is, I have a predetermined future. Say I'm not a biological accident. I know many of you are used to just say it. We are going on a journey tonight. Every man was born for a reason. Your purpose for existence is the problem you were created to solve. The solution that God put in you to reveal to your world. Your purpose in life. 
What problem were you created to solve? What solution? Look around the world. We are benefiting from solutions that have been provided to mankind. Men and women walked upon the earth in ministry, in every area of life. And they offered solutions to their generations. What generation are you for? Are you getting blessed tonight? So number one, every man was born for a reason. Debunk that demonic statement that you do not have a destiny. I don't care what has happened to you. I don't care what Satan has told you. Can I tell you something? Even the herbalist and the native doctors and those who sell their soul to the devil have a destiny and a purpose in Christ. Hallelujah. Fact number two, your destiny has been predetermined by God. Your destiny is not an ambition. Your destiny is not an ambition. An ambition is a desire, a craving of something or someone you want to become. That's not destiny. Your destiny has been predetermined. Listen to me. But it takes your choices and decisions to enter into it or lose it. Your destiny has been predetermined by God. But it is a sum total of your choices in life and the decisions that you take. He said, I set before thee this day blessing and cursing, life and death. But here's my advice. He said what? Choose life. Choose life so that you may live. Fact number three. Destiny can be aborted. This is the painful thing about destiny. Destiny can be aborted. In other words, God can earmark someone's life. And the man comes here on earth, spends 70 years, 80 years, even 100 years or more, and not locate his destiny at all. Not even leave it. May God forbid that any one of us will just walk through the earth and be a liability to this generation. Hallelujah. Destiny is an important thing. Listen, let me tell you something. When you find your place in destiny, that's where your blessing is. That's where your relevant is. There is no competition. It's a realm that only you exist. You see, the reason why many people fight, tear themselves, do everything, they do not even know that they have a predetermined future. And if they do, they don't even know how to get there. And tonight my job is to guide us into not just an understanding but an experiential work. The price. I made up my mind long time ago that my generation will hear my voice. When I said that you were not there. When I said that nobody was there. But today by the grace of God. Hallelujah. When you hear certain names Billy Graham, Dr. Miles Munro, Mike Mudok, Bishop Oyedeko, Obama. Hallelujah. When you hear certain names, they are associated with greatness. These were men who, who grew in all kinds of unfavorable conditions. Hallelujah. Men and women who shook their generations. Read through the Bible. Run from Genesis to Revelation. Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joshua, the prophets, Jesus himself, Paul the apostle. Every time you hear this name, you tag an aspect of greatness. I pray that tomorrow your name will be associated to greatness. The Bible says we have been preordained. By God. Please listen. So why why do people end up becoming failures in life? I asked the Lord this question and I was shocked. He gave me only two reasons. Why do people end up becoming failures in life? Someone who was destined to be a great apostle, a great prophet, a great teacher, a great evangelist. How come a man can have such a beautiful 
predetermined destiny and not even leave it. Do you realize that there was a prophetic grace upon Jacob? He never used it. He never worked with it. It was until he was at the point of death he began to bless his children. And you hear the prophecy that came out of him. This was, this was a grace and an unction that he would have used in his youth. Hallelujah. Have you not heard of people who at age 80 or 70, they finally give their heart to the Lord. And within the remaining time, they begin to put pressure on destiny. Listen, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Write this scripture down and never forget it for the rest of your life. Lamentations 3.27. He said, it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. It is good that a man bear his yoke. In other words, the Bible says the glory of the young man is his strength. Pay the price now. Don't pay the price when you do not have strength again. Why people, including Christians, end up becoming failures in life. Number one, I want you to listen with an open heart. Number one, excuses. Please write it quickly and look up because I want to talk about it. Excuses. This is the number one reason why many people become failures in life. And I don't want you to be victims of that. Excuses. We live in a world where many people, many people believe that their success depends on others and not themselves. Hallelujah. There are many angry people around the world in Africa, in Nigeria, giving all kinds of ridiculous excuses. Why God cannot use them? Excuses why they are drinking and smoking. Excuses why their lives are the way they are. Excuses. Not taking responsibility for their lives. Let me show you an interesting scripture. Proverbs 20 verse 4. Proverbs 20 verse 4. Let's hurry up. I want this, I want this word to enter your spirit tonight. Proverbs 20 verse 4. Anyone? Yes sir. 20 verse 4. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. He said the sluggard will not plow the land. Why? What is his excuse? He said there is cold. Therefore shall he beg in harvest. Therefore shall he beg in harvest. And have nothing. And have nothing. This is talking about um, fruitfulness, but this applies to every area of life. He said the sluggard will refuse to plow the land. What is his excuse? Help me please. There is cold. There are so many people who have given useless excuses. Why they are the way they are. And in Nigeria, we have so many of these people. A lot of youths are angry with the government. And say in America, once you are 18, they give you money. And now they are saying, if they were helping me, my life would have changed. And because of that, you move on being a failure in life. And when they ask you why, this is your excuse. Are you listening to me? There are many people that have given all kinds of excuses. My father is an irresponsible man. If my father was as responsible as other people, do you think I'll be where I am? Now that you know, what are you doing about it? Hallelujah. I used to live a bad life sleeping around. Now that you know, what are you doing about it? Are you following me now? There are so many people. It's easy to pass the blame of your life to other people. There are many of us still holding our parents, fathers, mothers, and different people. My father cursed me. That's why I'm not moving. Oh, you are aware. Have you taken any step? What are you doing about it? Are you listening to me, please? I came from a polygamous family. They didn't treat me well. It's not a lie. But what are you doing about it? Are you going to allow your destiny to be at the mercy of all kinds of excuses? Jesus came from Nazareth. Hallelujah. An innocent child. Suddenly Herod finds him to kill him. He would have gotten angry and said, Father, please take me back. Look at this nonsense. I'm coming to help people who are sinners. And you are not even encouraging my journey. You want to kill me. 
it's amazing ask many people why they are not advancing in life they will start crying and they will start telling you stories of yesteryears there was a guy when I was four years old the guy abused me and that's the reason why every time I see men or women I, I have an, an uncontrolled desire my brother and my sister how many years or decades has that been what are you doing about it are you listening to me someone insulted me and told me I'll never be anything so every time people talk to me and now we have all kinds of psychological teachings that encourage us to live in that realm they say you see mankind is a, our complexity as men there are certain subconscious things that remain and when it comes you are hurt you are emotionally hurt your heart is down look get up and move on with your destiny you know some of us get into situations and we give excuses wait until you hear the story of someone and the things they survive to come out you will see that you have no excuse for Solomon told us that there is nothing that has happened in the earth that is happening for the first time. Are you listening to me? Say, I refuse to give excuses. Oh, I, my father took me to a school where we sat down on stones. That's why my jam result, I've been suffering now. You can imagine this wicked man, you would drink this thing, we sat on stones, they used chalk. My brother and my sister, now that you are responsible for your destiny, what have you done by yourself? Hallelujah. When Kofi Annan was the Secretary General of the United Nations, he made a statement on Children's Day. He said, let the children not suffer the consequences of the carelessness of their parents. Hallelujah. When I heard that statement, I appreciated it on one side, but on another side, it didn't make sense to me. Because it is true that you cannot change other people. So the only way to move forward is to change yourself. Are you listening to me? Excuses. Several people give excuses. Oh, my father was this. See, let me tell you something. I'm not saying your excuses are not legitimate. They are. But for as long as you allow Satan to keep bringing that as a reason, you will remain there forever. There are people in this place who lost their loved ones, lost their fathers, their mothers when they were growing up. There are several people who were under some hostile environments. There are several of you who were involved in witchcraft and divination. It's not your fault. You grew up into it. Hallelujah. My father's mother was a traditional worshiper. Am I? If, if I add what I'm doing now with small tradition, the day they catch me, I say, uh -huh, why wouldn't I do it? You know, you watch people and see the excuses they give on TV. They catch a senator looting money and then he brings a flimsy and stupid excuse. He says, am I the only one? They should go and ask, what happened to our foreign reserve? What has that got to do with what you did now? Every time, every time, you are convicted. The, the thing for people is to look for excuses. You pour water here and ask people, who did this? The, what will people say? It's not me. But what, is it not affecting all of us? Say it's not me. That mindset is what I want to remove this night. Hallelujah. For let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, the great in life are men who have come out of unbelievable excuses. Are you listening to me? All kinds of excuses. There have been, I've, I've, I read a lot about successful people. Because the Bible says that he who dwells among the wise will be wise. Ministers, people in government, politics, the corporate world. I study about their lives. And I'm telling you, you cannot imagine what some of them had to endure. A man called William Seymour. The pioneer of the Azusa Street Revival. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, sorry, not the Bible, history tells us that the founder, the one who brought in the Azusa Street, he had one eye. One eye. Hallelujah. There are many of us who right now, you are, you are, there is annoyance and grief in your spirit with the government of Nigeria, with your families. 
say my brother is because they were sponsoring him to school that's why I didn't go to school okay now you didn't go to school and then your brother maybe ended up becoming an arm robber and forever every time you see him say this is the demon that swallowed up my destiny people give all kinds of excuses the Bible says go to the ants you sluggard and learn a very powerful lesson they take about 50 times their weight they have never given excuse and say God why didn't you increase our size seeing that we are this hard working they are able to coordinate themselves listen brothers and sisters if you do not stop giving excuses in your life, I promise you, you will live a life of bitterness and regret. You will initiate your children. You watch some people in the television and see how your parents frown at them. Say, ah, Mr. H. Then they just, he said, ah, daddy, what happened? Say, this guy, I remember how many years the guy has gone for, they are interviewing him in, on TV. The guy is happy. Your father is here. You are saying, okay, so how about our own life? Say, are you not hearing what I'm saying? No, you just add, you just pass the anger to people. There are people who are perpetually angry. You ask them, why? Why should I be happy? Are you not seeing what is going on in the world? Can you imagine Obama? He doesn't know you. You are dying there. Good luck, Jonathan. God punish him. He didn't hear it. Listen, I'm telling you something. Get out of this thing. The visit of Abu, stupid man. He doesn't know you. You are not living in his house. You see the house he's living in. You are there angry. Oh, this is my stupid lecturer. God will punish him. Yet, the semester just started. You are going to see him as many times. And you can't drive him away. Listen, let me tell you something if you don't stop keep, while you are laughing I hope you are getting this this is a very serious issue hallelujah excuses the bible do you know the bible says he gave unto men Matthew 25 five talent two talent and what one what was the excuse of the last one he said I know you are a hard man so that was his observation all through that period while his other colleagues were making use of destiny he was there saying I know you are a hard man you like reaping where you did so There are many of us who are here with our destiny. See, I cannot speak English. If God only made me finer than I am now, God, you said you didn't try. Eh? What is the meaning of all this nonsense? Oh God, if I had done this, if only I could speak like that guy. If only I could write. God, if you just if you had given me this guy's charisma, what the books I would have written by now. You think the people were born like that? see what you do not know is that every successful man started somewhere we are used to studying people's results not their history hallelujah so you see a man drops outside with a jeep lincoln and say hey, sand youths moving for the advocacy of employment in what is that and they gather themselves they fight over secretary they fight over something and they write a petition they say we want to see the presidency and you want to they get there and say, sir, on behalf of the youth in Nigeria, we are speaking. Why are there no jobs? Clicker ways of living. You are just hoping that one day, your father will just call you and say, now son, I've waited all these years to tell you that there's one secret inheritance that I've kept because you watched it in the Nigerian film. Now your father is getting older. You didn't hear anything. You didn't hear anything. Later, your father will call you and say, oh boy, do and get out of my household. Then it dawns on you that there's really nothing for you. Then you start getting bitter. The Bible says children are, are supposed to enjoy inheritance from the parents. Now that it didn't happen, what are you doing about it? You are there grumbling, writing books and articles, petitioning your parents. See, let me tell you something. I want you to make a determination tonight that you're going to take hold of your destiny. Are you listening to me? You can't cry forever. You've got to brace up, wipe your tears and move. Yes, the man slept with you when you were growing up. Yes, all kinds of things happened. Your uncle abused you. Yes, this and that happened. Yes, somebody broke your heart. Yes, somebody did this. 
Yes, the brother came into your life and swore heaven and hell and told you Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic and left you. Yes, this and that happened. But what are you going to do today? Are you listening to me? Many people give excuses. Oh, it's cold. So you won't plow the land. You just ask people why they are. I have not sampled 12 people. Ask them why they are in this level of life. Only about one in those 12 will take responsibility. And, to take any. and most of the people who will make that decision are usually bad, bad drunkards and the rest. You go and ask drunkards and smokers. They'll open up. They'll tell you truly, oh, I'm responsible for where I am now. But go and ask Christians. Didn't I pray that day? Even my seed I gave. I'm, I'm watching God. The day will come when I will. You can imagine. I brought someone to Koinonia. Now see the person growing. Doors are opening. God, let me tell you, if you are not going to do this, I will backslide. I will do this and that. And they ask you, they say, okay, why are you not consistent with God now? You say, when, when he doesn't solve my problem, won't I go? Who is suffering? Tonight is the night when you open up yourself and say, listen, I don't care from where I'm starting, but I will not end there. Are you listening to me? Say in the name of Jesus, I will not end where I am. Say it like you believe it, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. I will not end where I am. There's more about my life. I'm telling you, believe it. You wait and hear the stories of all kinds of people. And the things that they went through. People who trusted God at dead beds. Others even died and came back to life. And made up their minds. Hallelujah. There are people today. Look at the man Job. If there's anybody who should be discouraged about destiny, it should be a man, Job. He got to a point, in one day, your children, dead. Cattle, dead. Everything, dead. And then boils grow on your body again. To the point that dogs come and they are licking it. Imagine your father, sitting naked, using ashes. The Bible said he sat upon ashes. This was somebody who was talked about. Yet, Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. The wife said, Job, I love you. We had all these children with you and right now I must tell you that I'm tired. Job said, why are you speaking like one of these foolish women? The Bible says at the end of his life, he refused excuses. Can I tell you something? Great people are those who do what weak people refuse to do. They, they break through all kinds of things. Excuses. Oh, we come from this tribe. Our tribe, they, we are always known for this. There are all kinds of people giving useless excuses. The people from our tribe, Zev, they know us in our tribe as dollars, Jale. Although do everyone, if they, you just call our tribe, what are you going to do about it? With all the word you are hearing. We like women in our village. It's a cause. Oh, everybody has it. Who doesn't have it, please? Now that the word is entering your spirit, is it doing anything? Us in our place, so it's women that work. The job of the man is to go and get children and allow everybody. What are you doing about it? When they went with the prophet, the Bible says the axe head fell inside the ground. They would have said, Toh, prophet, at least you saw what we were doing before the axe head. They said, no, prophet, come. Many of you I'm telling you this. God asked me to preach this message. There are many of you that need to release your parents. Especially. Your father left you to your mother alone. Yes, you struggle. Your father is enjoying in maybe UK or abroad or anywhere. And you are here suffering. What are you going to do about it? Do you know you sit down there before you know it, you will look around and see four children. And you are sitting in the parlor with them narrating the same story that you didn't do anything about. The children said, Daddy, what, what really, why are we like this? And you say, sit down. Since you have asked, I will tell you. What, what kind of life is that? Some of you may be laughing now. You see, some of you may be laughing now. 
but you don't do anything about it and you see you'll be shocked in your life because it won't change automatically I made up my mind years ago that I was going to take responsibility for my life hallelujah many of you have had to miss semesters for students sessions maybe because one uncle who was supposed to be responsible said he will sleep with you he no sleeping with you no school fees and forever you sit down and say this uncle oh god miracle service you write his his name say god punish this man for me let his children know and we have all kinds of ridiculous woes is it do you realize that one man's failure or success does not affect your own praise the lord there are all kinds of people angry in society giving excuses go and meet our parents and they give all kinds of excuses it's true there's corruption they say forget jerry if i were yoruba they would have promoted me now or if i were Igbo, they would have all this Igbo thing or all this northern thing but have you made efforts you call the person who is making noise and try to interview him and see that this guy cannot even do anything instead of him to people are building he's not doing anything saying this contract yeah you know about people that's how they do or outside people not done and with their stupidity he's always like that and the person who is shot the day they give him that contract you wait and see how he will change he won't do it he will cause trouble are you ready for it no Say so I refuse excuses. Number two. In fact, say after me, my success depends on me. I take my destiny and I pay the price. I pay the price. I release everyone. Say it, I release everyone. And I take responsibility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two, one of the reasons why people end up becoming failures in life, please never forget this for as long as you live. Number two, violating the law of process. Violating the law of process. You just write it, I will explain it. Look at one scripture quickly, Mark 4.28. Someone help us read. We have to hurry up. Mark 4.28. Are you receiving something tonight? Is God speaking to someone? There are some of you, your brothers are 35 years, 40 years. They are still at home, true or false. You ask them why. They will see your father, they will hit themselves. The day your father talked, they will say, see, let me tell you something. When I was 26 years, remember this, now you are 40. You marry and still carry the wife to your father's house and say, is this house will stay? The day you give me land, I will pack out. Can you imagine The, you wait and see how do you know most of family fighting is on inheritance is that true the father left land and they said this land we will kill ourselves on this land you will see three generations fighting over the land that their great grandfather who was a king gave them they don't do anything Mark 4, 28. Please read, sir. Shall I come For the earth bringeth forth fruit of, of herself. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. Listen. First the blade. First, what happens? The blade. Alright? Then the ear. Then the ear. After that, the, the full corn. After that, the full corn. Stop. God bless you. It says the earth brings, but it tells you how we bring. It says first what? The blade. Followed by the ear. And then a lot of people have become failures. Please listen. Give me your ears, your heart, your eyes, everything. A lot of people have become failures in life because they do not know the law of process. This is a message that is not taught again because we're in a jet age. A generation where anything is possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Luke 2 verse 52, it says, and Jesus grew. Say after me, and Jesus grew. The Bible didn't say Jesus became. And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, 
and in favor with God, Jesus grew. The Lord grew. The Bible says, as far as the earth remains, seed, hold on, time, and harvest. Many of us read it in a rush. There are three words there. One is seed. Second is time. Third, harvest. It didn't just say seed, harvest. Seed, time, harvest. The law of a process. Many people, let me tell you something. This is what separates the great ones from those who are not great. If I say now, God will make you a great leader. Everybody will lift hands. Amen. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you. Or Jankwa gets up here and says, The Lord is showing me, my brother, that in five years you are going to become a world changer. Guys, start smiling. I say, I like Koinonia. I like this kind of thing. These are the kind of things I would like to hear. But now, when God says, let me tell you, you know the thing about God? He doesn't tell you how you will get there. He will first show you a picture of the promised land and say, let's go. Later, you will stop and say, oh, God, God said, didn't I show you? Let's go. Hallelujah. I don't watch films most of the time. But the Lord made me to watch one film called Lord of the Rings. Many of you watch film for entertainment. I got some powerful spiritual lessons about that film. Hallelujah. I learned a lot of things. Another film I watched called Aquila and the Bee. Did you learn anything? You are saying yes. <laughs> you just keep quiet and let me preach to you because many of you have watched it more than 10 times. You can say everything but you can't bring the moral lesson. Hallelujah. Someone who grew with no advantage whatsoever and became a world changer. What is your excuse? Listen, let me tell you. Everyone I know, whether in the ministry, in business, in politics, in government, in the arts, media, whatever it is, whatever area, anyone who truly stepped into sustainable greatness went through a process. Are you listening to me? Anyone that preaches to you, now we have all kinds of messages, spiritual shortcut. There's a pathway you can navigate in a hurry. Let me tell you, that pathway is witchcraft. Yes, it's witchcraft, I will say it. Because if you follow that path, let me tell you something with Satan. He will give you the products now and come for his money later on. Oh, he's a good businessman. He will tell you, you have it. And then you join the Americans. What America is doing is, is a, a physical manifestation of what Satan does to people in the spirit. You buy your destiny on credit and leave everything. So if you were in America now, many of you would have come for Koinonia with jeeps. Once you are 18 years, they give you money. You build house on credit, marry a wife on credit, divorce her on credit, build a business on credit. And you hold on and begin to see the kind of thing you are living for your children. I like Nigeria. Thank God. There's nothing like a credit system in Nigeria. If you don't have it, just go back home. It's a very good system. Are you listening to me? Are you getting blessed tonight? Say, I receive gifts to go through the process. Many young people don't like this statement process once you mention process ah people don't like it hallelujah every time you watch jollof rice when they finish it and package it and bring it you start smiling every time we're about to eat the food that our welfare people prepared for us sometimes i look and i just imagine how did they do this how did they do all of that how the processes you can't just lay hands on the rice and say, I invoke. <laughs> By an ability of the spirit. Hey! Let this thing become rice. It doesn't work that way. Hallelujah. 
Because that's what many people are doing. Some of you are doing it as you are laughing. It may not be for rice, but you are doing it for your destiny. You are sitting down and hoping. That's why many of you like teachings on favor. You are hoping. Ayah, I will enter houses I didn't build. I will marry wife I didn't ask out. I will have children I didn't... Get out of that illusion this night in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There are brothers waiting for the sister to just manifest and see them. There are sisters hoping that one day they wake up and say, Ah, you are the one. You hold on and watch the shocker that life brings. We like it when a generation of employment without submitting CV, everything. So we like it. The jet age that leads people into stupidity. There is something called the law of process. Let me tell you two things you need to know about the law of process. Number one, in the school of greatness, you must be tested and proven to be honored by God. If it is God, if it's your shrine or another um, demonic entity, it's okay. But if it is God, let me tell you something. You must be tried and tested. Psalm 66 verse 12. He said, thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads. We walk through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. Men rode through our heads. We went through fire, through water. Are you listening to me? Behind every glory, there is a story. Many of you are not interested in the story. You just keep admiring things that will never come into your life. And many of us have gone to churches where you claim. You come and drop your seed and don't do anything and watch how your life will surprise you. Hallelujah. The favor of God will never replace the law of process. Are you listening to me? So don't you think that if you can get the favor anointing, everything in your life will just happen like that. I hope you know Jesus Christ had the power to save mankind without dying. You know that in the infinite wisdom of God there would have been a way. Why did Mary just give birth to Jesus? You just hear a child just cry, ah! Then you see a great man say, I'm in a hurry. I need to save mankind. <laughs> you give birth to a child like that and see how you will run. You just gave birth to him, he landed and just got up. Say, what's going on here? What's my destiny? What's my assignment? It doesn't happen that way. It can't happen that way. If a baby drinks one drum of breast milk, does he become a man? Answer me. You call him a healthy baby. That's what happens. If an old man fasts for 100 years and dies, did you say a baby died? Who died? An old man. The law of process has cheated many people, violating this law. Running into realms that you have not gotten into. It takes time for true success to manifest. Write it. It takes time. So you don't let anybody deceive you. Someone just gets his small 500 or six or 700,000. Just buys his golf wagon and won't let you rest. Comes to see the world is working in my life. And you are taking things gradually. But you are beginning to faint and say, Kai, pressure is even coming from home. And people are saying, see now my brother just said he's a vet doctor. And you know, we live in a society that puts pressure on us. You hold on and start hearing the calls that come from everywhere. Say, we're waiting now, start sending the money. And now you are under all kinds of pressure left, right and center. It takes time for true success to manifest. Let me tell you what a process teaches you. A process simply means the pathway to your destination or whatever you want to achieve. Number one, a process tests your loyalty and commitment to fulfilling your destiny. Listen, listen, look at me. A process will test whether you are really interested in fulfilling destiny or not. Oh God, use me. Hallelujah. And somebody just, somebody just said, uh, sorry, I'm hungry. 
and God tells you the 500 naira in your pocket, that's all you have home and abroad, God will say, give the person. Say, God, the Bible says, you are telling God, oh, the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself, not better than yourself. And you are looking at God. And then you say, you want to be a minister. Oh God, give me crowd like Koinonia. You hold on. When you go through the process, at the end of it, you will know whether you want it or not. Process tests your loyalty. Let me tell you something. If you survive a process, you deserve the result. Are you listening to me? Many people don't survive it. I was listening to an interview by Ubad Angel. Many people say you are an exceptional prophet. You are a celebrity. He said, I'm, se I'm persecuted. How can I be the celebrated? You go online and see all kinds of things about him. But many people will see and say, I want that level of grace. See, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Don't, don't allow success bait you too quick. Let the process of God screen your true desire. Success tests loyalty. Hallelujah. How many of you want to be evangelists? Everybody get up. When Jake comes, because many of you think it's just anointing and you fall down. Jake says, alright, um, every week we are going to be going on evangelism. They will start with 100 people who came out emotional, even crying, cleaning their tears. After two weeks, you may find only 10 people. Why? Because you have initiated the principle of a process. A process is what separates great people from those. It's easy to talk, but it's a process that separates people. I want to be a champion. I am somebody. And you just dance. I am somebody. If it were just to be like that, there are people who varieties of oil has come upon their head. It would have changed their life by now. Process. Process. So process helps you. It tests your loyalty. Anything you are not loyal and committed to, you will never get it at the end. Number two, process builds patience. Impatience has cheated many people in life. Listen to me. There's no anointing, impartation, hand laying for patience. You are taught patience experientially. The Bible says in James 1 verse 3, it says, count it all joy, my brethren, when you go through several diverse um, temptations. He said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith will produce patience. He said, and let patience have her full course, that it will make you mature, not lacking in anything. Patience. How many of you have come to meet your father or some of your parents? And while you are jumping and excited about some things, they promise me visa to UK. You just see your father not interested. He said, Why well, uncle promise? And your father is just looking as if he didn't hear you. You have never gone through disappointment in your young and youthful life. He received disappointment in 1971. Somebody promised him he was going to Scotland. He didn't go. It happened again in 1970. He has gone through too much things. It has helped him to be patient. You are coming happy. Oh, and they prophesied this, you know. He's just looking at you. Two weeks later, you come back and say, God, this is my uncle. You have told your friends. He told you, just keep quiet. Yes, you, you are too grateful to keep quiet. You ran around town. Ran your mouth around. There are some things only age can teach. When you see your father keep quiet, he said, they promoted me, but you just wait, let him manifest. Say, what is that? Don't hide good things. After you receive disappointments for a number of times, you become grounded initiated into patience experientially hallelujah your car was not good they say let's fix it say no let's go are you joking the world is working they say let's fix this thing it can cause trouble on the road you say ah daniel said this this in the bible this this said this then you are going you stop and sleep on the road that night you call on to the god of israel you pray and sing listen to koinonia tapes nothing happens the next day when you see a zealous apostle saying let's go you see is the car working if it's not working say hold on it's not lack of faith you are you say i can wait i'm not in a hurry I, if i cannot make the first two days of the program i can make the third day i'm not in a hurry 
that spirit of I believe in speed we prophesied every miracle service but there is a hurry hurry that leads you to death are you listening to me run away from it you sit down you know the background you are coming from you look at your friend and say hey this girl is wearing Brazilian weave on me I'm here soaking my own and washing and rinsing it every time who said you will remain like that who said you remain like that and you are under all kinds of pressure impatience has produced arm robbers impatience has produced let me tell you most people that violate the laws of life are people who could not be patient men i, I shared it here men of god who have touched a lot of things adding to the anointing they have mixed the anointing with wine it's not that god didn't call them they said kai to wait five years we were on campus for four years meeting at the back of Sunday school building. Every night, we were being proven by God. I cannot tell you the suggestions that came from different people. Do this, do that. God showed me this. Some even drew the diagram of what they saw and brought it. I said, thank God. But when it was God's grace, what happened? He brought us to this level. And we will stay on course until it pleases his majesty to open greater doors if you learn to be patient in life you will find out that your patience will make you faster than those who are running watch a driver who is running as saying driver we are young people in this car let's go 180 the driver said i've been driving for the past 10 years i've had accident 10 times i'm not in a hurry we'll get to zaria you are just running one car just passes you later on you see people picking out the legs here the head of the person here and you will now say, oh dear God, this would have been us. Patience. God can wait. God can wait. God is not in a hurry the way many people teach. God can wait. Let's hurry up. Number three. A process helps you to appreciate success and to honor successful people. If you have not gone through a process, you will never know how to appreciate success many of you take certain things that god brings to your life for granted until you go through certain processes when you come out can i tell you something as i grow in ministry every day i cultivate a deep respect for the fathers of faith who have gone ahead seeing some of the challenges that come before us in ministry and other things when you see certain fathers you just wonder what did these people endure you hear about some of them who had churches and God asked them to leave and go to Lagos and they slept on that bridge for months before they got their parishes. And so you just think. See, I learned this from Dr. Mike Modok. Celebrate greatness when you enter its presence. Don't pretend there is no greatness there. Are you listening to me? When you enter, it, I shared it in, in when we we're doing the teaching on the law of honor. Whenever you see greatness, don't pretend this is not greatness celebrate greatness when you enter its presence because the great are those who have endured what you could not endure they went through things where you gave up they continued the film lord of the rings again among the many scenes in that film there was one scene that i will never forget remember when a gentleman called sam he wasn't the one holding the ring are you listening to me but Frodo, the ring bearer, got tired and he said something. He said, I may not be able to carry the ring, but I can carry you. And he carried that gentleman and started moving him and together they accomplished destiny. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. Successful people are those who did not give up when you gave up. So celebrate greatness when you enter its presence. It may be your brother. It may be your sister. Success helps you. Sometimes you see people standing in anointing because you got born again and every prayer you prayed was answered. You now say those who are fasting, I beg Jare. Then you go through some process. There are some people that if I see them doing some things, I just keep quiet because we saw it happen on campus. There are people who were very stubborn and they were not well behaved before, but now when they see you, they greet you. Ah, every time I look at them, I say you have come. You have crossed that door. You just see them, they see you and they greet you. They say, sorry, is there anything you think God is saying about my life? They won't say that before. When they see you before, they'll come and push. How are we colleagues in ministry? When certain things went through and whipped them back to order, 
when they see you now, they greet. How many of you have seen people like that? They used to be so rude and hostile to you. We are roommates, so we are this. Thing. Forget you may be my senior in secondary school, but we are roommates now. Don't play with me. Then the day they need your help, the day they make a stupid decision, they will now know they are childish and they will come and you bring forth wisdom. A process helps you to appreciate success. Some of you inherited the success you have now. So you are taking it for granted. You grew up with a plasma screen in your house. So when somebody is giving testimony and saying we use, how many of you know this kind of CD plates that are round? You just hold it and touch it lightly. Then it starts going round. That's how some people grew up. But you grew up with everything. Some you even have gadgets that you just speak to it from your room. We grew up and my parents, my younger sister is here. We had one beetle, green beetle. I learned how to drive with that beetle. No alignment, no nothing. You are driving, it's going, you have to bring it back. But many of you grew up, it was a jeep that carried you from the hospital and brought you. You just grew up. One day you saw yourself, you saw people snapping and say, Daddy, who is our father? They say he's a commissioner or is this. So you don't know how to appreciate success. You trivialize a lot of things. You insult your cook and say, you mean this is the food you cooked? And then sometimes, after you go through certain processes, you come back with a depth of wisdom. Every time you see success, you appreciate it. Hallelujah. Number four, process creates a memory that helps you sustain success when it comes. Listen, this is very important. The Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them. Can I tell you why? God, no matter how you pray and fast, there are some realms you must grow into. You will never jump into them. You know why? Because there are certain memories you need to sustain success. Are you listening to me? Look up, please. There are many of you here. You don't know what it means to be charismatic and to be a celebrity. It can be demonic. Are you listening to me? You get to a point where men can almost worship you. At that point, you need the memory of the wilderness to sustain you. Because you can get to a point in your life, people cannot even talk to you. They can't access your office. They can't do everything. That's why today, every time I stand, you see, when I sit down here, you put, see me close my eyes sometimes, I just remember. I say, God, God of Israel. To see where God took us and brought us by grace. A process creates memory. Are you listening to me? When you were taking pap and cocoa, you will buy cocoa 20 naira, yam 10 naira. The remaining 10 naira they should put pap, half cup, when you are taking. And now the moment you see delicacies, you will remember. The Bible says, Thou shalt remember. So while you are enjoying in the palace, that's why David danced. He danced before God. And Saul's daughter was saying, don't embarrass us. He said, I'm dancing before God who collected the kingdom from your father and gave to me. People who do not, you see why many politicians are reckless over spending because they did not go through a process. Hallelujah. Somebody had 50,000 home and abroad in his account. You jumped into an office and you saw accounts linked to your office with no name. They were not tied to your name. They were tied to the office. You award a contract of 10 million and somebody just brings a, a car of, of 2 million naira. Say, I just said you should use it as straw. When you want to buy a recharge car, just throw it. You say, what for? Many people jump into success and destiny. That's why they are short-lived. No matter what kind of prayer you pray, if it is success that comes from God, I assure you, that door of process, you must pass through it. Fast, pray, cry. You must pass through it. There are some cups in life that are not meant to pass. You must drink it. Peter said, I will drink the cup. He didn't even wait to hear what Jesus was saying. And he truly drank it. And some cups are big. So I you must drink everything inside. I was told of a man, just a story, a fictional story, I believe, that he went to heaven, was come complaining and say, God, which kind of useless cross are you giving me to carry like this? I'm seeing people laughing. I'm the only one frowning in the world. 
Then that he went to heaven and they led him into a room. There were all kinds of crosses, different weights and sizes. And the Lord said, oh yeah, go and pick one by yourself so that it won't be me. He saw one small one, very small. He just went and carried. And the Lord said, but that's the same thing. You just, you just carried what you are complaining. That's the one you were carrying on earth. The guy said, you mean there are some people carrying this one? He said, and they are happy on earth. From that day, he came back with a mindset. Process. We have taught people in church that process is as a result of lack of faith or demonism or all, of, all, all kinds of things. It's not true. Do you know David was anointed king, sir? But when he was anointed king, where did he run to? Back to the wilderness. He was anointed king. He was not anointed shepherd. But he went back to the wilderness. And what happened? He grew into the throne. Hallelujah. He was, he played strings for the king. He became his armor bearer. Then he became king. I won't deceive you, brothers and sisters. There are many of you that are running too fast in life. And you are, you are soon going to have a head-on collision with disappointment. You need to pipe down, come to yourself and take life gradually. I ask some people, I say, what's your financial budget? What do you want to make per year? And they mention one stupid and ridiculous and childish figure. Whether it's, it's 10 billion or something, they say they want to be getting per month. I say, starting from now, I say, yes. <laughs> your brother is collecting 30,000. I say, me, God forbid. If it's not 250, I won't start. You hold on. Life has a beautiful way of teaching people lessons. You see someone collecting that, I say, me, with this faith that I have now, you just wait and see. Or someone finished school and is going to teach. I say, what kind of nonsense is this? Ah! You have fallen our hands. Hold on. You are going to finish. Contagora, your convocation gown is waiting for you at Contagora Square. You will finish. And then suddenly you will find out that life is not fair. As you are graduating, your uncle that says you should bring CV just says, I'm relocating to Holland. Number one, welcome to the real world. Then your father says, now I've been waiting to tell you this. You're of age. Please go and find a boss quarters or whatever. Just get out of my presence. A process helps you. It sustains an experience. How many of you have seen very wealthy people live simple lives? And you are surprised. You say, if it's me that had this money. Because you don't, never covet a man's result if you don't want his history. Never. Never covet a man's result. That's why reading books, I like reading books about people's history, not just their results. Hallelujah. They talk about Johnson Suleiman, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, a great man. Many people see him today. Do you know that this guy, I hear, was one who was cleaning the shoes of Idahosa and doing a lot of things. Janfa was telling me how that there was a time someone fell down when Idahosa was around fell down in the presence of Johnson Suleiman and broke his head into two. He also held the two heads and joined it back. He was watching process. Today you see him shouting and speaking and you just say, Lord, that dimension, I give myself a span of three months. Wait and see the demons that will lead you there. I'm out of time. I'll round up finally by sharing keys to a successful destiny. I'll give us six keys. Tonight's teaching is very simple and we'll pray. Six keys to a successful destiny. Look at me. Lift your right hand, everybody. Say in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I receive grace to go through the process of greatness. Say, Lord, I receive grace. I'm not in a hurry. I will wait. I will move at your timing and enter my destiny. In the name of Jesus. Don't let anybody put pressure on you. They say at your age you are not married. They don't have the same destiny. If the person is not married, tell him go and marry. In the, in, in, the overtaking is allowed. Go. Don't, don't put pressure on me. Or they look at you now and say, see, at age 26, I was a millionaire. Look at you, 33. 33, you are looking at me. Take it easy. You have a ministry. There are only five people. You come and sit down in Koinonia and say, hey, you find out how our first crusades were. First crusade. The first day of our first crusade, those of us who went, I think we were, we were 
it was us and then some other few people one day I told God I said see crowd or no crowd crowd started coming in our ministry when we gave up on the issue of crowd and just focused on God I see a lot of people especially young pastors around the, that that the people come carry all kinds of offering and write all kinds of useless titles on it and come and meet me and see one to tap it calm down don't you know that at every level there is a level of responsibility that comes with success keys to a successful destiny number one determination you must be determined to succeed do you know what determination is it's a resolve it's a resolve Burn the bridge behind you and say, no matter how long it will take, I will get to destiny. Some of you here, God is calling you into different areas. Fashion, media. You know that God has told you that the world will hear your voice. But are you willing to pay the price? Let me tell you the truth. If you know what the price is and you pay the price, nobody will stop you. If, if a little girl, Madame's daughter, Madam, if your daughter holds, assuming a Mercedes Benz is 7 million, if your daughter holds a check of 7 million and goes to a car factory and gives them, will they say your daughter is too small? She brought the price. Let me tell you something. Every enviable destiny you see, including your own, has a price tag. Stop deceiving yourself. Look very well. You will see the price tag. Be determined to succeed. Be determined. You must lose something to get to your destiny. I won't deceive you. You will lose your reputation. You will lose some sacrifices. You may lose your weight. You may lose a lot of things because you will have to fast and pray. You will lose a lot of things. You will be wearing two shirts and one trouser. You wash it in the night and wear it in the morning. But you are buying books. No problem. A day will come you will not need to buy things again for the rest of your life because you have created an impact a time will come in my life i am convinced if i buy clothes is my choice a time will come in my life if i buy cars oyedeko said they give him cars every day where were the people when he was driving his beetle to go and hear what god was asking they will come eventually be determined say in the name of jesus i'm determined to succeed Say it in the name of Jesus. No matter what I will go through, I make up my mind. No matter what I have to endure, I will fulfill destiny. Look beyond limitations. Look beyond barriers. Number two. Number two. Go for information. I beg you brothers and sisters, go for information. Your destiny will not open up automatically. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. Go for knowledge. Get information. Hallelujah. Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, study, study. He said, and I, Daniel, understood by book. Great men in life are those who read, study. Study the life of great people who are in the area that God is calling you. There are two ways to learn in life. Mentors and mistakes. Mistakes are the ways that foolish people learn. Hallelujah. Mentors open up their wounds for you to see. Are you listening to me? So that you may not have to make that same mistake again. Let people help your life. Get their books. Get tapes. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience. Study their stories. Pray. Don't just run after power. What do they do that brings the presence of God? What do they do that brings the favor of God? What opened the heavens for them? Hallelujah. Say, I go for knowledge. The Bible says, Proverbs 4 verse 7. He said, get wisdom, get understanding. Go for wisdom. Go for understanding. Many of us don't buy books. We don't invest. Many of us don't go online. Years ago, 
before they even started internet, mobile communication, we used to go for vigil in um, Evolution Cafe. We'd go and sit down there and we'd just be night vigil because we could not afford browsing any time we wanted. So we'll go in the night. you pay 150 or is it 200 then? And then you browse all through the night. We're browsing Peter Tan. We're searching what is the Holy Ghost doing around the earth. Why are some people poor? Google, search. You keep your eyes there. You are wrestling with sleep. You say, sleep, I have a journey I'm going. You won't stop me. When you are feeling sleepy, you get up and stroll outside. With your shoe and sandals scattered, your shirts oversized, everything. But you say, I'm going somewhere. Many of you, don't be ashamed of the process because it will be a while and you will live it forever. Hallelujah. We're praying. Many of you sleep and snore and wake up and get angry. You think your destiny will open like that? No, sir. Get wisdom. Get information. We invested heavily in books. I still read books till today. I read books on leadership. I read books that help me. It's not everything you see done that is just the anointing in that sense. We're rounding up. Number three. Spend time. Spend time praying for your life and destiny. Write it. If you don't pray for your destiny and you find out that you get there, you got there, you were dreaming. I assure you, you were dreaming. Just wake up, wipe your tears, and see what you are in now. If you wake up, just find out that you are because you have a devil who will not let you enter your destiny. But it is through the greatness of thy power that the enemies will submit themselves. And he spake a parable to the end that men would ought always to pray and not to faint. Don't you think the devil will sit down and just watch your destiny unfold? From the day Jesus was announced, Satan started following him. When Jesus was fasting, Satan was patient. Waited for 40 solid days until Jesus finished. He said, oh, thank you. And he came. He said, now that uh, this has happened, he began to negotiate. Your destiny will not change overnight. Spend time praying. Lock yourself. Pray. Carry the notebook. If you don't have a notebook that you are recording things for destiny, I know you are lazy and you are not serious about your destiny. You must have a notebook. How many of you have notebooks? Don't lift your hands because some of you will be lying. Don't lift your hands. How many of you have notebooks that you write that God showed me? I saw it in a vision that one day I'm going to be helping the less privileged. I saw myself on TV. I saw myself. I saw myself beyond my geographical location. I saw myself. Yes, I can't speak English well, but the me I saw in the, in the future was speaking polished English. So you don't rejoice over me now. I know I'm making grammatical structure and, and nonsense, but I'm praying. Thank God you don't need to learn tongues. I'm praying it. And I'm rising. Get Tessaros. Get a good dictionary and sit down. God told you you'll be a public speaker. You think the way you are talking like this will invite you? Change your mind and read very well. Get a book on public speaking and read. You want to be a man of God and you are ashamed of people and God has said you stand before crowds. The remedy, pray in tongues. Boldness. Boldness will come upon you. Hallelujah. So get a notebook, everyone. A notebook, write destiny or purpose or whatever. I have notebooks for my finances, for the things that God tells me, for the visions that he has shown me. Some of the books are torn. I've, I've been transferring them through the years. Some of the sermons that we preach here are, are things that the Lord taught me. Sometimes I would dust it and read it and cry and say, your majesty, you taught me these things. I did not understand, but now I understand. If you don't have any book, who, how will you teach people in the future? Because many of you are only thinking about yourself and your wife and your children. Think posterity. Hallelujah. Spend time praying. Say, I receive grace to pray for my destiny. Be disciplined. Be disciplined and focused. 
Isaiah 50 verse 7 he said I have set my eyes like a flint you must be focused in life many of you are too distracted you are doing everything you are in every group you are in every association you are in everything where are you going I'm going where small time now you carry one girl or one guy add to the, the trouble you are creating you are going where are we going how many of you have climbed bike and you told the bike he called the name of the place he didn't even hear he said yes I know and now you are going later you tell him ah do you know the place he said Kai, I, the last time I came here he doesn't know where he's going when you don't know where you are going and you carry other people there's an accident that is going to happen for sure be disciplined if God has called you to ministry for instance you've got to be disciplined you are like a military man you cannot entangle yourself with civilian affairs. It's a sacrifice. You can't live an ordinary life. No. You can't accept the call. See, when you accept the call of God upon your life, that's your end to an ordinary life. Sisters, if God has told you you will marry a man of God, just know that you are going to live a life of sacrifice forever. Just forget about trying to have it my way. That one is gone. Go and look for a pilot or, or, or someone, a businessman. God has called you. What's your name, sir? Eh? Philip, please stand up, sir. God has called you, for instance. Alright? No, keep standing. And say, Philip, tomorrow you are going to own banks. For instance. And now God has spoken to you. And now Philip is not doing anything. He just says, Prophet, so, so, so. so every time he sees him on TV, he said, that's the guy. He spoke about my destiny. He said it 10 years ago. 10 years later, nothing, no movement in the realm of the spirit because it will not happen automatically. Please sit down. What has God told you? What are you doing about it? When I knew the call of God was upon my life, I started reading books. I have books about ethics of ministry. I have books about church planting, discipline, focus. Now is not the time for visiting everybody. That day will come. But now is not the time. Some of you are always visiting and running around. You go and meet your friends. Tell lies. Tell lies. Tell lies. You are lying and they are listening to you. You are just telling lies. You don't even know when you have tied yourself in. They are just looking at you. You are lying. What you say you didn't do. In the gist later you said you did it. And then they remind you. and say, Oh sorry. I didn't do this. Those things are unnecessary. Settle down with your destiny. The Bible says in the multitude of many words, many useless words, sin. What is the sin for what? Lying. You say things that didn't happen, create your film there, act it, the people are watching you. Be composed. Listen, I'm telling you, package yourself like a leader. You can't just do everything. Hallelujah. Be disciplined. You are saying God is going to bless you and you stand before nations. You are just moving outside. You just buy popcorn. You just cry with your cookies. Some even small, you pick it and drop. You won't go far that way. I assure you, you won't go. Pray in tongues, you won't go far that way. You must be disciplined. You go somewhere, you have not even prayed for the people. They said there's food. You say, hey, thank you. Why can't you hold yourself? The Bible says, a man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city without walls. There is a time to eat. There is a time to live. There is a time to collect money for many gullible people. There is a time to live and say, God bless you. Hallelujah. There are ethics. Many of us need to learn it. You have not done anything you want to sit in front. The Bible says when you come into a place, go and sit at the back. Hallelujah. It's God that will bring you to the front. Many of you will come. I'm not saying front, literally. You get what I'm saying? You just come and sit. Then later they say the, the people who they kept the seat for are coming. They lead you in front of everybody. You must go and sit at that back and start gradually till you come. If you ever came to the front because someone brought you, that's not your position. It's just favor. You will still go back. Many people have lived around successful people and they think they are successful. If I have a friend, come sir, my brother. If I have a friend, assuming this guy is my PA, every time I go for administration, you will sit in front, Abby. He can be deceitful. Because the day I'm not around, you will bounce in front. And they'll say, go back, Jerry. You really believe you deserve the front seat? 
many of you are leveraging on the success of others and God is telling you you need to create a track record for yourself you don't pray but their prayer covers for you you don't fast their fasting covers you say I like this kind of friendship a day will come you will stand on your own that's the day the robber will hit the road God bless you sir the time I was trying to save has gone praise God finally embrace a life of competence and excellence Proverbs 22 verse 29 see thou a man diligent in his business mediocrity will only end you average in life whether in ministry whether in business whether in politics whether in education on your job be excellent be competent Genesis 41 verse 14 powerful scripture it says and Pharaoh sent for Joseph and Pharaoh sent for Joseph why because he interpreted the dreams do you know what he said he said and Pharaoh sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon Pharaoh sent for Joseph Joseph had prepared himself I've said it favor is when preparation meets opportunity and the king Pharaoh sent for Joseph and what happened they brought Joseph out of his competence that will bring you out of your dungeon many of you are in some dungeons you inherited if you remain there you will remain there you will give birth there hallelujah I have a destiny in Christ and I vowed to my generation that I will pay the debt that I owe this generation I'm speaking to champions right now look at me we're going to pray many of you are sitting you are hearing the voice of God through what I'm saying you need to rise up tonight don't just feel emotional about it and tell yourself I've had this word and I'm going to run with it outside some of you may be outside nobody is seeing you you are just there I want you to know that destiny is calling vow to yourself that I won't fail that you won't allow anybody go back and find out what am I on earth here for cry unto God if you don't know why you are living you will keep escorting everybody in destiny and you will get old and find out that all you were doing was to be escorting others it's time to discover purpose if you cannot tell me why you are alive in one sentence you do not know it hallelujah I assure you you do not know it the first time I heard Dr. Miles Munro say this, I said, what kind of arrogant man is this? But eventually I found out it's true. Hallelujah. What is the color of your shirt, Aaron? Black. Simple. Say the color is the one that is not the white. You don't know it. What is the color of your shirt? Black. What is the color of your own? White. Period. What are you here for? Don't talk Greek and what are you here for? If you don't know it, go and flog it out with destiny. Because there are many people who do not know. For the prophet, he said, while you were in your mother's womb, there are many of you God has called you to wipe the tears of generations. There are many of you God has called you to have NGOs and conglomerates that will help people. There are some of you who are entrepreneurs. Some of you are evangelists. Some of you are going to be in the area of government, some business, some politics. Do you know what you are working for? Or you are just depending on your certificate and then ladies hoping that one man will come and then you ask the man, what, what are you? And the guy say, I'm a preacher. I say, I'm a preacher's wife. Is that what you are waiting for? Rise up on your feet. I made this decision years ago. I cried in ABU Dam. I said, God, I will not leave this place till you open up the portals of destiny for me. I must know what I'm on earth here for. Today, I thank God for knowing why I'm here on earth because many lives have been blessed and this is only the beginning of great things to come. Many of you who have discovered destiny, have you been walking in it? Go back and listen to this thing. Provoke yourself. Don't let a generation die. You have the destiny of a generation upon your shoulder. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Say, Lord, I thank you for this word tonight. The price. Katapalata kabaria. My generation will hear my voice in the name that is above all names. Jesus was born in a manger. No one saw him except a few people. When he was about going to heaven, a crowd was there watching him. 
you came to this earth only a few nurses and doctors saw you who is it that will see your life and say thank god that he came and lived i was watching a documentary of archbishop benson idahosa and they wrote they said he came he saw and he conquered can that be your testimony lift your voice and begin to pray that will be my testimony in this life that a young man came he saw he shook the sands of time i will shake my generation with the power of god i will shake my generation with the life of god i will bring sinners to the saving knowledge of god we will go to nations i tell you i've been saying this thing for years lift your voice and pray we are rounding up pray the holy ghost is here say i'm not ordinary i refuse excuses i'm ready to begin to take a definite journey no matter what the limits are i take off the limits lord together with you we are an unbeatable team you are the prayer point of someone on the way to happen someone has been praying the bible says the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of god don't say i am weak don't say i am small don't say i am local no take off the limits nigeria will hear voice pray it africa will hear my voice in the name that is above every other name i will take the word of the lord the counsel of the lord i will stand before nobles i will stand before royalties and they will hear the wisdom of the lord nothing will stop me i'm an infant of fire going by the power of the holy ghost no devil born in hell can stop me pray say i will build that hospital by the power of the holy ghost i will build that airport i will build that bank by the power of the holy ghost i will be that kingdom financier pray say i will be that prophet i will be that apostle it does not yet appear but the mantle is on you i tell you rise great one hear the voice of the lord i speak to you almighty man of fellow almighty woman of fellow just walk with god he will make a wonder no matter what your disadvantages are yes you are not in school yet that's not an excuse you cannot speak english you lost your parents you've not gotten a job you are not married yet you don't have children yet that's not an excuse make up your mind i go through the process pray say lord i pay the price the price of diligence the price of prayer the price of fasting i go for knowledge i pay the price i pay the price for financial prosperity i pay the price for the anointing i pay the price for the influence of the spirit i pay the price of diligence hallelujah hallelujah there are many of you you're already paying your price in school right now avoid that laziness if you are a student don't leave us if you have graduated stop that fake and useless life you are paying a price you may so gary drink it honorably you may have one shirt wear it honorably once upon a time we could not afford these things but today by grace he has helped us you will remain that way so don't behave as if you remain that way don't try to look for things around you to define you be proud of where you are start it honorably you may not have food to eat but you can pray and say lord i know this is only for a while a day will come i will feed nations in one minute say lord hold my hands and let's walk to destiny hold my hands hold my hands strengthen my hands oh god lift your voice and cry for it's a year of supernatural exploits lord hold my hands hold my hands through challenges 
where I want to give up, oh God. He said, and when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Say, Lord, tonight I make a vow and a commitment. If I perish, I perish. But I must leave destiny. If I perish, no going back. I burn the bridge behind me. There may be sufferings for a while. There may be constraints for a while. You will give up a lot of things for a while. But it's not compared, I tell you, it's not compared to that glorious destiny, that enviable destiny. The shepherd boy became a king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Now very quickly you are in this place. The journey starts with Jesus Christ. There are many of you who love the Lord and God brought you here. Tonight is a real destiny encounter. God took you from wherever and brought you here. Inside and outside you are hearing my voice and the spirit of the Lord is telling you you need to make it right with God. You've been a Christian but you've never really made a commitment for the Lord Jesus Christ. Or you've been born again but you've just derailed from the path of God. There is love in this place. No one condemns you. It's time for a fresh start. There's no point delaying. Destiny is calling. I'm telling you, many of you will hear this voice echo in your spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to invite you right now. Leave your seat inside and outside. Those who want to make a fresh start and you're saying, Lord, I surrender totally. Hold my hands. And let's begin this part of destiny. I give my life to Christ. Oh Lord, I come back restored. Leave your seat and come out here quickly. Quickly, the Lord is talking to some people. Inside and outside. The Spirit of God is talking to you. Appreciate them, they are coming. Appreciate them, they are coming. Keep clapping, the Lord is bringing them. No matter how bad it is. I'm telling you. No matter how bad it is. Start a real journey. Mean it from your heart. Outside the Lord is calling you. Outside the Lord is calling you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Begin a journey of destiny. Keep coming. Don't sit down there while the Lord is talking to you. Don't be ashamed of your friend. You need Jesus Christ. He's the fountain of life. It all starts with him. It all starts with him. He said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Keep coming. The Holy Ghost is still speaking to men and women. There's no point sitting back. Brothers and sisters, there's no point. This is an opportunity. You may be beautiful, you may be handsome, but let your destiny look like you. Keep coming. God is speaking. Don't assume it's an opportunity for destiny. You've never made a decision for Jesus. Even if you have a Christian name, it won't take you to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for coming out here. Some of you are coming out to make Jesus Lord of your life. You're saying, Lord, it's over. I'll stop struggling. The Bible says in the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. For some of you, you have given your heart to the Lord, but you want to make a genuine commitment. No matter how many times you have made it, don't be disappointed with yourself. We are here to love you. We are here to help you. There is always a new beginning. He said, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old, for behold, I do a new thing. God is doing a new thing. Lift your right hands, those of you in front here, and as loud as you can, I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you Please mean it from your heart. You are not reciting a poem. Lord Jesus, I come before you unable to help myself. But today, I surrender all. I surrender everything. I denounce sin and Satan. I make up my mind to begin a journey with the Lord Jesus. No going back. I receive eternal life into my spirit be my savior and my lord holy spirit come upon me powerfully 
and empower me to live the victorious Christian life. My generation will hear my voice. The things I used to do, I will do them no more because the power of the Holy Spirit enables me. From today, I'm a genuine, I'm, I'm a saved person. Genuinely saved. I break away from wrong associations and influences over my life. I begin a journey in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for my brothers and sisters. It's my privilege to lead them to your throne. We thank you. This is what this is all about. Some of them are rededicating their hearts to you and some of them are making fresh commitments. Lord, you see their tears and you see the depth of their commitment. I break habits right now. Every habit that is not consistent with the word of God, I break it in the name of Jesus. I command you to be delivered from every stronghold that has brought you here by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare that from today, your transformation becomes evident in the presence of everyone. I bless you with the blessings of the Lord. I bless you with a fresh hunger for his presence. I bless you with a fresh hunger for prayer. I declare that you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.